in Mexico and travels all the way down here politi politically. That is the area that was discovered by the Spanish primarily and therefore has a Latin connection to us. Okay? We have our country up here. Mexico is our pol first political country that's not part of Anglo-America. Anglo-America was USA, <laughs> Canada, above it. We do have Mexico, your little belly button. What was that country called? Belize. Beautiful. Guatemala, right? What's this country? Honduras. Honduras, good. Your El Salvador's, good. Your Nicaragua. Your cap, which is Costa Rica. Costa Rica. And your Panama. Okay? You do need to be understanding of where things are at. As we talk about Unit 7, you're going to have to be able to connect where it's at on the map. <coughs> you also have the Caribbean areas. We just focused on the Greater Antilles. Okay? So we have our country of Cuba. Cuba. Above it is Bahamas. Below it, that little dot was Jamaica. Jamaica. We got our Haiti, Haiti and, and Dominican Republic. Dominican Republic. And it pointed to. Uh, Puerto Rico. <laughs> Remember the point. Okay. Again, those are the primary things we focused on for your assessment. There is one unique thing about the thing, the Caribbean. All the islands in the Caribbean are named politically and the island names are the same. Except for that one right there. What's, what were the two countries' names? We got Haiti, Haiti and Beautiful. But the island has a name as well. What is it? Hispaniola. Beautiful. Because when the Spaniards came, they named the island Hispaniola. Later on, it was divided by countries. Okay? All right. That is next. Uh, the fourth, the top part of Latin America. We do talk about what Central America is, which is Mexico, the Middle America, and of course, wait, no, Central America is Mexico, Middle America, and the Caribbean combined. Okay, that map. So when the people talk about that, they're kind of in the center. Let's further travel downward into South America politically. South America, we have our wonderful song. Ready? Mm -hmm. We got Caracas, Venezuela. Sing it, Cooper. Bogota, Colombia, Quito, Ecuador, Lima, Peru. La Paz, Bolivia, Asuncion, Paraguay, Santiago, Chile, Buenos Aires, Argentina, Montevideo, Uruguay, Brasilia, Brazil. Beautiful. Now, also, to help remember the other political countries or divisions up here, is your toes or your foot, right? So we had, what country was this one again? Colombia. Then we have Venezuela. Now, to remember which one of these is Guyana, Suriname, and French Guiana, how, where do we start? The pinky toe. The pinky toe, because we got to have our... French manicure or pedicure on our French Guiana. That is separated by Suriname and Guiana. Politically, piece of cake, right? And I, if you think about it, it becomes. When you're faced with a quiz of it, unless you do the practice of the, the videos and the games, it is hard, okay? All right, before I walk away from the political one, let's talk about landlocked. What is landlocked? Oh, um, it, there's, there's no contact of ocean. Beautiful. Land that has no access to ocean on any side. It's surrounded by other land. Like Idaho. Like Idaho is landlocked within the United States. And somehow it's mm -hmm. to the ocean. Okay. No, no, no. Ocean. The reason you want access to the ocean is to sell your goods, to trade and import and export products. By being landlocked, that means they have to travel through another country to import or export. So therefore, they're taxed by those other countries, which becomes quite expensive for the products. They either lose the money 
or they have to spend money to get products back. Does that make sense? So in South America, what two countries are landlocked? Paraguay. I consider this one kind of like a peanut of South America because it reminds me of a peanut shell. Okay, so we got Paraguay, the peanut, Paraguay, and Bolivia, kind of a funky bean. Those two are landlocked. As you can see, there's no, the body, they're, they're not connected to the ocean at all. There's no access. So they have to travel to other countries to get or sell their product. Okay? Political. Now let's talk about Latin America physically. We have the Rio Grande River. The Rio Grande River is, would you go ahead and answer? It's around here somewhere. Okay. The Rio Grande River is right around where, find as far as you want in this. Yeah, he popped in before class. He, apparently he has, he told me he was checked out, checking out to go to his um, Wednesday appointment. He did. Okay. Here we go. Rio Grande River, which actually starts out as a Colorado that blends into the Rio Grande River. It was the only river that's navigable in, Latin, in Middle America. However, here's the deal. The river, I was researching it yesterday for another student, found out it's not considered navigable because the water's too low. Thank you. He should be right here, but yeah. All right. Sounds great. So here we go. We got that. Rio Grande, navigable. Okay. You're not done with Unit 7. You can't be done with Unit 7. Oh, we're on Unit 7? Yes, and use the new bus. You're being recorded. I know I am. Do we do for watch YouTube videos? Uh, no. You work on it or watch it? Watch it. Yours? Yeah. Yeah, you may. Okay, so Mexico, we have two peninsulas off of Mexico. We got the one on the west side, one on the east side. On our west coast, we have the peninsula called Baja, California, good. Our East Coast is, I forgot something. I know something you like. And it has peninsula. It is Yucatan Peninsula. Okay. Now, we got the Yucatan Peninsula. So you, oh, the door is locked. Would you rather really quick look We also have body of water over here. This big body of water is on the west coast of all America. The big body of water on the west coast of all America is. Is he not there? No. Okay. The what ocean? What ocean is this one, guys? Uh, Pacific Ocean is on the west. On the east is the southern ocean. No, no. East. I want to do it. The Atlantic Ocean, and the bottom is the yeah. southern. Sit right here. You should have stayed in class until somebody got here to get you. Okay, Southern Ocean. Just have a seat and pay attention, Sean, because you're missing all the lectures I needed you to hear. Okay, let's continue on down. So we got Mexico. Also, is touched by this body of water, called the Gulf of Mexico. Uniquely, the Gulf of Mexico is the only body of water that touches the United States, Mexico, and Cuba. Cuba. Okay? The Caribbean Sea is right here above South America, north of South America. That is the body of water right in there that helps because of the Caribbeans, the Caribbean islands. Okay? Again, we talked about this island name. What was that name again? Uh, name. Hispaniola, yes. You need to know the, the physical name of the island and the political name of the countries. You will need this by the end of the year. So get this one drilled into your head. Okay? Mexico also has a central plateau surrounded by the Sierra Madres. 
within the Sierra Madres, especially the southern part of the Sierra Madres, you have <coughs> active volcanoes still. Even so today, they're still are they're still active. Um, not active. Okay. Um, so that's the southern part of this, this part of Mexico. Okay. You also then go down southward. We have what's called an isthmus. What is an isthmus? Does anybody know? Um, it does sound like Christmas. Has nothing to do with Christmas. Sean, pay attention. This is your test. This is your quiz. Pay attention. An isthmus is a narrow strip of land that connects the two larger pieces of land. We've got our narrow strip of land that connected our two larger pieces. Okay? This is called the isthmus of, well, where is it at? Panama. Right? Yeah. Isthmus of Panama. It's your foot, right? Okay. Did I talk about the Rio Grande? Yes. Did I talk about the volcanoes? Yes. Did I talk about the Baja California yes. and the Yucatan Peninsula? Good. Okay, let's keep going down southward. It is South America. We have the wonderful backbone of South America that's also a physical bridge dividing the west coast from the east coast. What is that physical feature called? The Andes Mountains. I call it like a backbone of South America because if you look over on that map, the one that's kind of colored, you can kind of see, oh wait, that might look like a spine. Oh, you're looking at there. Yeah. Okay. This one's a little bit busy, so you can't see the spot as well. Okay? Within the Andes Mountains, high on the Altiplano, is the most wonderful lake to say for sixth graders. It is called Lake Titicaca. Yeah, Lake Titicaca. Okay? Lake Titicaca is on the Altiplano. It was also divided, bordered by two countries. There's two countries that is on Lake Titicaca. What two countries do we have? Bolivia and Bolivia. Bolivia's on this side. Up here is. Okay, let me help you. Here is where it would be if it was on this map. What two countries do I have? And. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. Right here, the yellow strip is actually a desert, one of the driest deserts in the world. That desert is called the Atacama Desert. Fun fact. They actually studied, uh, tested the Mars rover in that desert before they sent it out to Mars. Sean, pay attention. Okay, we already talked about the ocean here, which was what? What ocean? What ocean? What ocean? Good. Now, physical features. We have what's called the Patagonia. Patagonia is a high plateau. It's very cold down here. It's really far south. It actually is primarily good for raising sheep. About anything else doesn't really grow there. So it is known for raising sheep. We have this area here called the Pampas. The Pampas is great for raising grains as well as cattle. Well, actually growing grains, raising cattle. Uh, this is where you'd find the gauchos of Latin America, AKA the cowboys. We have what's called here a Rio de la Plata. This is a very important air waterway for this area, because like I mentioned about landlocked, the rivers that flow through Paraguay, it's the only gets products out is through that river. Um, therefore, see, they have to pay another country to leave. Not very good. Um, Rio de la Plata feeds into those, or the road rivers feed into it. It's an estuary. We got a Plata Madagroso. We got the pump, the Brazilian highlands over there, nothing really amazing about it, but we got this wonderful river right here. What is that wonderful river called? It is the largest river of Latin America. The Amazon River is the largest river in Latin America. It's actually the second largest in the world. When the river, the rainy season, when this area floods, it fills up a basin. What is this basin called? The Inigris. What would the basin be called? Amazon Basin. Yeah. It's kind of like a bowl shaped area. And it's over here. It's over here. I see it. Just leave it alone for now, Sean. We'll deal with it later. Okay. Sorry. Shut up. It's okay. Shh. 
glasses. Keen? I don't know. Take a look. Okay, but Sean, you need to pay attention. Jaden, look in the binder before you continue talking. We have this here, the Amazon River. We have little ones that feed into it. And it's also known as Amazon Rainforest, or other people talk about it as a cellus. It was in our book we read. Um, there are the Guiana Highlands. Uh, we have some rivers up here, but outside of that, as far as being ready for your test tomorrow, I don't think we have to worry about anything else, or today, I mean. We also have, do we know, is there any 